Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree and free black and white check projects. We're going to first start by making this really cute triangle banner. Um, and the secret to this one is why it's free practically is that we're going to print the Buffalo check off the computer. Down in the description box below you'll find the link to a free printable that you can adjust the size of the buffalo check by the size that you print out. Um, it's really quite easy. This is what it looks like printed on um, in the 8x10 size. I know the pa paper is 8.5 by 11 but this is the 8x10 printing and I'm sorry that the new camera, this is the first video I shot on the new camera, got corrupted but all I did was um, trace onto a piece of paper. Basically I tried to get the most triangles that I can get out of one piece of paper. It ended up being um, starting with the center of one uh, square and going to um, just a couple of rows over to the where it, two squares intersected on the bottom and then matching that. But you do whatever works for you. Some people do like the other well we do we like the other banner shape that kind of has a triangle cut into it it's almost like a square with a triangle cut into it but once you have this paper printed um, you really don't have like any limits really um, what I did was I cut out eight but I'm only going to use seven I just like that odd number um, and then we're going to I, I kind of arranged them so that they weren't they, when you cut them, they cut into different patterns. Um, so I just arranged the pattern. So it didn't look like three that were identical and then three that were different. I did like, you know, style A, style B, style C, if that makes any sense. Um, but again, you do whatever works for you. Now, what I love about these banners is you can customize them. You can hang things between the triangles. Um, they're all over the different stores this year where there's like a cute little black and white check thing and then a pumpkin um, or a cute little black and white check thing and, and like a turkey or something and I just wanted to be able to bring this to you for almost no money. I'm using a piece of jute string that I was gifted. Um, thank you Weaven for giving me this Walmart jute. It was like it's like really nice actually. <laughs> But we're just using a hole puncher from the Dollar Tree, punching holes. I just measured the same amount in on all of the different um, triangles just so I could get it even. And then slid it over. Again, you want to be able to slide them to fit the space that you want. If you want to make more, you can, obviously. You don't have to stick to just seven. You can customize these with words. You could put letters on them. You can stuff, like I said, you can hang stuff between them. But the trick is that these are printed on card stock or cover stock. They're actually printed on cover stock. So are these, but I'll show you these in a second. The next one we're going to do is this banner, not the one with the hearts, um, the one with the leaves. And this is the pattern where it's printed on a five by seven um, size, which makes the check smaller. Um, you can also use these are the paper napkins from the Target dollar spot that we found. We're going to use one leaf, two pumpkins, well actually one pumpkin and two of these leaves, but really this is sort of like a leftovers project for me. Um, you can do really whatever you want. We're also going to use some decoupage. Um, I wanted to show you too that that was the piece of the cut up um, headband that we used from before, which you could use as well. Um, but I wanted to do was, this is, I had one leftover pumpkin, but I wanted some symmetry. I wanted a leaf, a pumpkin, and a leaf, and a pumpkin kind of thing. But I only had one leftover pumpkin, so what did I do? I just cut one out. I 100% just traced the pumpkin, cut it out, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to decoupage um, the second pumpkin. Um, it wasn't necessary. It just was to show you two different ways to achieve the same look, okay? So like I was mentioning that this is cover stock. Um, if you're not familiar, oh, basically I'm just doing decoupage onto the paper and then sticking the wood piece down and then setting it off to let it dry. I'm going to repeat this process with the wooden leaf as well. Um, once it's all dry, we're going to cut it out with our favorite craft knife, exacto knife, whatever you're comfortable with. Just make sure you push it up against the wood, not too firmly, um, but you'll see it works with all different kinds, okay? But anyway, um, what I'm sorry, it was, I'm all over the place, but um, if you're not familiar that printer paper comes in pound weight, so like regular printer paper is around 20 pound weight, um, card stock is, you know, can be 60 pound weight, and then cover stock is usually around 40. 
don't quote me on those numbers, but I'm just going to give you an idea that cover stock is just a little thinner. But you could use cardstock. The Dollar Tree actually sold cardstock for a while, um, which would work really well. And this way you don't need to have the wood behind them. But if you have the wood pieces and you have like the napkins, you could use them. I wanted to just show you a variety, okay? Um, so what I did for the end of the first pumpkin is I took the sandpaper and I wore off the edge to give it just like an aged look. I held the sandpaper, I folded the sandpaper in half and hold, held the fold, um, perpendicular, not really perpendicular, like at a 45 degree angle from the edge and I just pulled it all down just to make it like a nice worn edge. Um, for the leaf, we're going to do something a little bit different just to teach you different things. So for this leaf, we're taking the X-Acto knife and you can see that I'm kind of going slow and I found it to be very important because even with cardstock or cover stock, um, if your knife isn't sharp enough um, and you've decoupaged it, you could tear the print and you don't want to, you know, you just want to be careful. Make sure you have a nice sharp edge on your knife um, and go and take your time and go slice at a time. Um, and I just was going back and forth and checking and one of the tricks that I use is while I look at the leaf, like while I like with the print, I can fold the edge of the paper over um, to make an impression of the leaf in there so that you could see what you're doing a little bit better. And now for the leaf, I decided to take a Sharpie. I held the side of the Sharpie and I colored not only the edge of the leaf, but like the edge of the paper where it kind of met over. So we have a worn one with sort of an eye, like a, like a white print edge and then we have this one with the black edge um, just to show you different techniques of what they would look like um, and then of course the paper pumpkin we didn't do anything to we just left it like a paper pumpkin now for these leaves we're not going to mod podge we're actually just going to use Aline's tacky glue but I wanted to show you two different ways to use the paper napkins oh that's the four by six print it's much too small for this leaf I should have probably switched them around because it would have fit on the five by seven um, but I decided to use the paper napkins from Target but I wanted to show you um, the paper napkins glued down one with the two layers with the white behind it and one with just the one layer um, just to show you that they um, these particular napkins are pretty strong and they come out relatively even which is kind of cool so how I'm achieving this and why it's going so slow, this is in real time because I wanted to show you guys what I was doing. I'm outlining the entire leaf onto that extra piece of cardstock that was left over from before and or cover stock. I keep calling it cardstock, but you guys, cardstock would work by the way. It's just that that's not what I'm using and I'm trying to be fair. <laughs> So once you have the whole thing traced, I just want to like make my lines nice and even and basically shore up. And the reason I want to shore up my lines is because we're going to actually just um, make a secondary line about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch smaller or in from this original line. You don't have to measure. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just eyeball it. Just try to follow your original lines. Um, and you just want to come in with your pencil just a tiny bit um, and then you want to basically create a littler leaf just basically like you shrunk it down a little bit. I was inspired from something that I saw at Pinterest that I believe was from Etsy but I don't remember if it was from Etsy or from like Kirkland's so forgive me if you have an Etsy shop and it's your idea. I can't remember exactly 100% where I saw this on uh, where the where the when I saw it on Pinterest where it was originally from. What we're doing is we're going to create this um, smaller leaf that we're going to cut out of the, the tissue paper because we want to create that nice, really, really cute burlap border around there. Now, you can make it even smaller than a quarter of an inch and eighth of an inch if you want, like, a really big uh, burlap border. That would be really cute, too. Um, or if you use the big leaves, um, the big oak leaves, not these oak leaves, I'm sorry, the big maple leaves, you would, you could do a, a much wider border around the edge if you wanted to. Okay. And you just want to follow it all the way. Um, again, people are always like, oh, you're so good. You're so good. I just, I promise practice, put your heart into it. Just practice. The other thing is to see the first thing that I learned when I took a drawing and painting class in high school was you have to learn how to re-see things. Because your mind wants to see things the way it orients it, but your eyeballs have to see it the way it is. And um, one of the lessons that she taught us was to draw something upside down so you can actually see its lines and not its image. It, it's sort of a weird 
it's sort of a weird thing, but it's almost like your brain wants to create it like it's an optical illusion. You know, if, if I told you that, you know, your cheekbones don't actually go in, they go out, and I'm, I'm just picking some random thing. But if I told you your cheekbones don't go in, they go out, you would be sure that your cheekbones go in and your mind would draw your cheekbones in as opposed to looking at actually what they're doing um, and how it actually looks. So while I'm cutting in real time, I figured I would just go ahead and share that little piece of lesson with you. But yeah, you have to learn how to see all over again when you're drawing, which is kind of cool. Um, Okay, so now that we have the template of a much smaller leaf, I'm going to show you that you can cut it out of all things. You, the napkin, um, this is the actual headband. We had cut that fabric open from that headband. I was going to use this, but I figured that these are hard for people to find. Um, and you could go ahead and just print this check off smaller um, from the computer. There also are other size checks on there. Um, so, But the one that I linked is just the one that I used. Um, and it only costs you a piece of paper and your printer ink. Um, so to me, when, if that's the case, you know, you can get hundreds and miles of, of, of papers for, for no money. Um, yeah, if you have a printer, I mean, ink costs money, don't get me wrong, and paper costs money, but for less than you would buy it for, you know, 25 cents. <laughs> A lot of people talk about scrapbooking paper being on sale, and I'm like, yeah, but the printer paper's freer. <laughs> but now I'm just cutting it out. I'm being trying to be very careful because it is just a napkin, um, so it does fall apart like tissue paper. And like I said, this first one, we're going to go ahead and just leave the two layers together. Um, and I want to show you, it just adds a little bit of whiteness to the white areas when you take off the background paper it will um, go ahead and make like it almost a little bit more translucent and um, bring some of the burlap color through but it's not objectionable either way they both look really really cute um, now this is just Aline's tacky glue um, and I you don't have to saturate the top and the bottom because it is a napkin and it is absorbent um, so when you lay a good line of glue down, it will actually come through and grab the top layer. When it's dry, we're going to go back and we're going to see if any parts are peeling up. We can just always add a little bit more glue to it, okay? And of course, I have this on my, my craft mat because the glue will come through that burlap and you don't want it to glue to your surface, okay? When it glues to these mats, you can just peel them off. <laughs> So now for the second one, I did peel off that backing and I just glued the one napkin. And then of course you let them dry. I let them dry overnight. Um, all of these projects with all of the decoupage and stuff. This is the next day where everything was dry. Um, and now we're gonna lay them out um, for our banner. Now normally when I make a banner, I make a banner adjustable. Every once in a while I'll make a banner that isn't. So if you're gonna make a banner like this that isn't adjustable, make sure you have your size and your spacing information available before you start um, but what I've done is I've turned them all over I'm going to put the um, maple leaf in the middle add a little bit of hot glue and just glue the jute down you don't want to glue it from edge to edge because then it'll hang weird you want to just glue like a little strip in the middle um, so it kind of curves a little bit when you hang them now I've added a strip of hot glue and then when I've uh, let it set a second and I've taken the hot glue gun and I've basically put hot glue over it as well um, just to let it go and then you want to really let that set up now for the two oak leaves I could have just hung the wire on them but what I ended up doing was peeling the wire off and if you guys know me by now and it's pumpkin season you know that I took that brown wire and I made tendrils <laughs> I wrapped them around, I took one and I wrapped it around a paintbrush handle to get a nice tight tendril. I cut it in half and I repeated it for the two pumpkins, the two little pumpkins, and I glued them to the two pumpkins. And then that's it. You just hang them and they're so adorable. I absolutely love this. You can't even tell which one's just the paper and which one's the wood, except if I didn't age them. <laughs> now for this last project, I'm so proud to 
teach you guys how to make one of these really cute kitchen towels. So we're going to need a pot holder and a kitchen towel. This is just one of the many ways to do this. This is sort of the not easiest way and not hardest way, but the middle way. And it's only going to be with hand sewing. So you're also going to need a needle and thread. Now, the hand sewing isn't necessary. You could use your sewing machine, but I'm going to show you how to do it with a needle and thread. And in real time, I'm going to show you how to thread a needle when you can't see. <laughs> so I have the piece of thread on the end and I'm just going to rub the eye of the needle over the piece of thread and miraculously, you can see here, the loop comes through the eye of the needle. It's amazing. When I started to have trouble seeing, I had to look up, is there an easier way to do this? And I cannot believe that this works as well as it does. I am like it, more impressed than anything. So what I've done is I've taken the towel and I fold it in half. And by the way, you can do this with any towel and any pot holder. It does not have to be from the Dollar Tree and it does not have to be this Buffalo check one. Um, but what I've done is I folded it in half and then I'm going to start on the very end. And what I'm going to do is I'm pull the thread through the needle through and then I'm going to pull the needle through between the threads under the knot and that's going to secure the end. Um, and then I'm just going to do a running stitch, which is basically go in and then out about a quarter of an inch away. And you're gonna repeat that the whole length of the fold, right on the fold, okay? Now I'm using black thread, don't use black thread. I'm using black thread so you can see it. If I used white thread on this project, you guys wouldn't be able to see it um, The um, for sure, like for 100% sure, but I will show you at the end. Um, but then what I did was I laid the pot holder down and I pulled the thread through, and that kind of works like a cinch. And I put the pot holder down so I can measure how much I needed to cinch. Basically, I want to cinch it to make the top of the towel as wide as the pot holder. That makes sense. I found the middle of the pot holder by folding it in half. And then I went ahead and I tacked through the pot holder on the ends only. Um, after I tacked the first end on, which I basically went up through the whole pot holder and back down through the whole pot holder. Um, through the towel and then through the pot holder. Then the whole rest of the time, I only sewed through the towel and through the top layer of the pot holder. Um, mo mainly I did this because it's a little difficult to hand sew through that pot holder. You could use a thimble if you want to, but I also didn't want to have a whole line of threads um, in the pot holder as well. Chances of the threads coming through that you can see um, are chances that they will pull on something in the wash or you know pull on something in your house um, the fact that there's only threads coming through on the very ends makes it a little bit more secure as well and then you're going to repeat this the whole way i used a blanket stitch and we've talked about that on our channel before but basically you put the needle through both pieces of material you wrap the thread around the needle and then pull it out and that makes a blanket stitch um, and again you would be using white thread on a white towel i'm using black so it shows up for you guys you do this until you get to the end of your thread or the end of your pot holder. And then you're gonna repeat going through the pot holder on the other end. And you wanna secure it with plenty of knots, like I like to do two knots. And then I take the end and I bury it and then cut it off. Um, and now the last thing that I didn't mention you needed, but you need is a button, um, a button big enough to not fall out of the button, of the, 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 the loop for the pot holder and not well, not too small that the, no, okay, I'll only start over again. <laughs> you need a button that is not too small that it will fall out of the loop and not too big that it won't fit in the loop. Does that make sense? Sorry. And for the button, I'm going to sew through just that one layer of pot holder. I'm not going through to the back. I'm going through just the top layer of pot holder. Now, as far as what side faces out, that's a matter of personal preference. Um, but if you want the button to face out, be mindful of where your towel is. Um, but what's really nice about this is that I sewed on one side and it's reversible. This particular towel has the print on both sides, so I could swap it out either way. But if you have a towel that only has a print on one side, be mindful of that when you sew. Make sure you sew on the back. And that's it. That is all three of these projects. I'm sorry this is such a long video, but I felt like they were a little bit in-depth tutorials. So if you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the description box down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family, anybody who might be interested in making any of these projects. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye.